to live uh, under the subway track. So under the subway, there's a lot of storage. So this is a park, and it was recently uh, renovated. So in the park, uh, we created also water storage. Now this is a new, a new uh, residential area. We <coughs> decided, okay, we built above the water because people like to live near the water. So it's a combination of water storage uh, in combination with the residential area. This is the city center, the central station, which was uh, opened last year by our Queen uh, Maxima. And under the central station, there is a, a water storage. So you can see here this plastic called crates. So in periods of heavy rain, so the water can be uh, transferred to this area and it can be, in, it can be temporarily stored. And from this area, it can be pumped into the river. So it's an uh, urban water storage. This is an urban floodplain. During the dry period, you can sit here, you can relax here in the summertime, and during heavy rain, it can be used as a floodplain, so it can flood, but it will not affect anybody. So it's like a controlled flood. This is a, a what we call a water square. So during the dry season, people sit here, people play here, football, basketball, but during heavy rain, and this is your picture, so this area will fill up with water as a temporary storage. So it's a controlled flood in a city area. We also have this green roof policy, because usually the water falls on the roof and immediately it's uh, uh, discharged into the sewage system or to the streets. So, but with a green roof policy, we think we can, uh, the water can be temporarily stored on top of the roof and it also improves the water quality and it will cool down the city. So it's a, a government policy. So they give subsidy to uh, big companies, malls, who make their uh, roof green. So it, we hope it will improve the quality of life in the city and it will also decrease the temperature during the summertime. Oh, maybe it's not so, uh, okay, no. In district level, so what we do with our students, so always what measures could we apply in this area? What problem do we have in this area? Which stakeholders do we have to involve? Because we always have to work together with different stakeholders, with residents, with private companies. And how we can add value to the different measures. So if we have to invest in a certain area, we can, we can uh, predict what will be the value for different part partners. And that's how you can convince people to work together. So how do different stakeholders profit from an uh, investment? So that's what we teach our students and that's what, that's what we train them. Okay, uh, Rotterdam University, to give you an introduction. So we are about uh, 34,000 students. So we are quite a big uh, university. <laughs> We're all in uh, one building. <laughs> now we have uh, several campuses all over the city. So actually, although we are a big university, if you're only One faculty is only in one building, so you never feel you're a very big university, but we have a lot of courses, maybe next, about 3,000 employees. This is the city center. These are all our locations, two, four, six, eight, 10 locations <coughs> of the city, and this is already on campus. Oh, sorry. <coughs> this is the newest location. I'll come to that later. So the focus of our university is the Rotterdam region and the port. So we always have to find solutions that will benefit the city or that will be benefit the port. Um, okay, next. We have about uh, more than 100 uh, different courses. We have some different schools, different faculties. Two research institutes, RDM Center of Expertise, more the technical research and Amy, so that's more the social research in the Rotterdam region. And I'll focus on RDM campus. RDM stands for, before it was Rotterdam Dry Dock Company, were you also have that in your presentation? Yes, you can find more. Okay. Rotterdam Dry Dock Maatschappij, uh, so it was a uh, ship manufacturing company and also submarines. So in the 1990s it went uh, bankrupt. So we have those big uh, warehouses where the workers used to work. I think thousands of people used to work there. So it's really a very big complex. 5,000. 5,000 people used to work there. And in the 
1990s, it went bankrupt. And in the beginning of 2000, it was decided, okay, we're going to redevelop the area and make it a, a research center, an innovation center, together with uh, the private sector, the public sector, and universities. And now it stands for research, design, and manufacturing. So students work together with private companies in research, design, and manufacturing. Okay, again, a story about uh, the port. Rotterdam used to be the largest port in the world, but it's now uh, two, four, six, seven, eight mm -hmm. largest port in the world after some Chinese uh, ports. But the biggest in Europe. But the biggest in Europe. Okay. And now we don't only only want to be the biggest because we're not really profit from that. So you get more goods in, and you have to transit on a truck and then transport it. So actually, it does not really benefit to the city or benefit to the region, only it creates more pollution. But now we want we want to be the smartest port. So that's more the, the focus now. Yeah. This Arden campus, this whole area used to be a uh, factory. And the submarines were constructed here. These were the headquarters. And this whole area is now um, Consortium and Rotterdam University is part of the consortium. So research, uh, lecturers, innovation takes place in these uh, buildings. Next. Within RDM Center of Expertise that we both part of, educational institutions, research centers, and businesses work together on improving technical education, new knowledge, and smart and sustainable innovations that are needed for the port and the city. So it's a breeding place where students and companies collaborate in an open environment and focus on new economic activity. So actually we also, we attract new startups, also students who, are there, who want to start their own company to settle there at Erdem campus. They can rent a space and they can work together with the university. They can work together with other startup companies. So we really hope this will uh, accelerate uh, innovations and it will uh, enhance uh, students to yeah, start their own uh, business. So it's always what we call the triple helix, a combination of businesses, research and education. Okay, next. So the port and the city, smart and sustainable. So these are some research topics, resilient city, future logistics, how we can create uh, new ways of urban transport without uh, pollution, without CO2 emissions, uh, an export industry and renewable sources such as energy and bio-based materials or uh, circular economy or you have heard about these three topics. And we do that in what we call communities of practice. The communities of practice is where people who share the same interest from research, from education, from private sector, from public sector, so they come together on different topics, on the same topic, but they come, we have different topics, we have different groups, and they come together like uh, once a month, and they share their experience, they work together, so they can, uh, together they uh, apply for subsidies, or they uh, come up with a research agenda, and in this way, we want to uh, enhance the innovation in the port area. Now what we do there, we have 3D printing, we have drones, we have sensors, underwater drones, we have robotics, a metal workshop, a wood lab, we have e-mobility laboratory, now I don't know everything, the concept house village facility, but, but uh, you will explain about it. Now this is the concept house uh, village, is at the back uh, of our university, the Arian campus and it's, they want to create a sustainable community and sustainable buildings. So all these houses are constructed temporarily and they can be uh, say that, dismantled and all the materials can be reused again. So it actually it's a showcase. So there are different uh, buildings around the Arian campus. So when you're there, maybe you can walk around and see them because there are hundreds of, probably you cannot organize a tour, but you can also look it for yourself. These are our uh, water lab. Oh yeah, this is our water lab. It's not it's not an ordinary boat, but the idea from this boat is that it's um, it's 
self uh, self steering. Self steering. So it's not with a remote control, but self steering, and it's also it can do uh, centering and monitoring. So we're also experimenting to put sensors under the boat. Yeah, do different experiments. It is because uh, the idea is in the future there's very big container ships. Probably in the future there will not there will be only maybe one, or they will be unmanned. I mean, there will be no captain on the ships, and these are in the linear term model, we are experimenting with that, if it can work or not. Now this is our water lab, we can create waves. This is outside, in the river. Now these are our results of the sensors and the internet of things and big data. Well, uh, probably you are more familiar than me, than me with these topics, we also have that. Yes, so we have different uh, courses also for uh, little children to come to our campus and experience what they can do with the Internet of Things or sensors or other new technology. So <coughs> also with the idea that uh, new young students would love to study techniques. <laughs> so here you can see a student with a very good brain, so you can steer that. Uh, this brain, so this is made by a robot. But it's also at Erdem Campus, that's a company who has this robot and he rents a space and together with students they're experimenting new forms of construction. This is a, a metal 3D, or this is a wood a 3D printer. This outside. This is a future uh, mobility, so these are these, uh, we have these races in Australia with uh, solar panels, you have to reach, you have to travel over 3,000 miles, so Rotterdam University is also participating in that, together with Delft University, teaching mobility. This is a 3D uh, metal printer, so they can print these uh, robot uh, things. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the barn, and actually this is the location probably where we will work when you're at RDM. So this is a very big uh, space, and we can put chairs and tables, and uh, that can be transferred into a working space. <laughs> at RDM campus. So, that's a short introduction to water management, the challenges in RDM campus in Rotterdam. Are there any questions uh, so far? Yeah, you have a question. Um, I said that the uh, problem was that the groundwater levels were rising. I thought they were like sinking, or doing like groundwater levels in the um. ground. No, because in the Netherlands, because we uh, have this very high groundwater table. Yeah. So maybe in Switzerland the groundwater is very deep, but in the Netherlands, because we are clay ground, so the water cannot really infiltrate. In some areas the water is only one meter below your house, that's already okay. water, or the water table, and then when there's heavy rain, so the water table goes up. Because of what you said, like rising to the groundwater, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you really look close to the Netherlands, we are just a floating country because our, our water uh, is just one or two meters below the ground or in some places. Yeah, and if you see all those polders with the cows, you can see that the, yeah, the, the surface and, and the water is only sometimes only this, the difference is only this. Mm -hmm. And then heavy rain, all the, the grass is, is flooded, so actually it used to be a swamp because yeah. the pump had made made it dry, then you can use it for growing grass, because that's the only thing you can do with it. But the groundwater table is very, very high. Okay. okay. So when we, when we have a drier season, the water, of course, is uh, lower, but then the upper level of the ground is <coughs> dry, and then when it's dry, it's just... Oh, it's gone. Gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need a, a balance between wetland and yeah. dry land. Yeah. Okay, so we continue our yeah. conversation. Okay, then we do the, the